priority and the prayers with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday, the chief justice is empowering, the, the deputy chief justice is empowering the bench. We are called, like uh, in a lightning speed, to appear before you. Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You will come up right away from that reality, your lordship, most respectfully. My lord, with your kind permission. My lord, the first thing would be this that if this matter is going to be conducted, like today, on the basis that only those matters where the Attorney General is itching to set aside the conservatory orders are the ones that are going to be had. There would be something wrong because other cases that are even officially before you and probably assigned to you by the actual Chief Justice of Kenya are still pending. So what was this where you prioritize the state as it used to happen those days before we had a new constitution? Issue number two, my lords, is this. The issue of bias. And this is bias by the Honorable... The, the, I think, Mr. Mugai, uh, you are going beyond ordinary comments. If you have an application which addresses those prayers or those issues, I think you... Let me raise the other issue that yes. does not have to do with those things. Well, the, the last issue, therefore, would be this. If assuming that cases that were supposed to appear before you are cases that came after the impeachment. My Lord, there are about four matters, one of them in which I appear, and this is a fundamental issue. That matter is coming on Thursday. Okay? The, an express order of the court that has not been set aside. The question would be this, for purposes of good order, and for purposes of us making this application, why would it be difficult even for this bench to order all cases, because that is a right to equality under Article 27 of the Constitution, that deals with the same subject matter, come on a specific day where all parties have noticed so that even the issues that we are raising against the Deputy Chief Justice can be formally put on record so that we do not have this anxiety that somebody is speaking off record. But Lord, why I say as I go to see, why I say this is important is this. The matters before you over and over again, the repeated question has been, uh, the right to fair hearing is being sacrificed. Under Article 25 of the Constitution, fair hearing cannot be taken away even during an emergency. It is an absolute right in this country. So that my Lord arising from that, the question that uh, we would like us to be addressed is that to say that we are going to conduct matters by installment and the only justification for the chosen installments being that the Deputy Chief Justice is biased for the state and has therefore constituted a bench that can be able to hear the state's application is clearly not permissible. Yes, sir. So that my Lord, I, I had I, to go. I, 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 I would not, uh, please, we should not bring the DCJ uh, conduct at this stage because I think uh, that the DCJ discharge our administrative duties the way it should be done. Uh, that is not a if, you have, if, you have, if you have an issue with that, please don't make a generalized, generalized complaint. Well, this is not generalized. It is in writing and we are making a formal application to ensure everything is done on record. And at the day that right, as I sit down, the issue of that right is that we have had a situation before the National Assembly, before the Senate, it didn't seem to matter. Before the High Court, my lords, I submit the right to fair hearing under the Constitution must count for something. <coughs> Otherwise, Article 25 would effectively have been amended to please the state. I urge you respectfully. We hear you. My lords, just to add on what my lord has submitted on.